Hallelujah. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Remember how Jesus told you that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. The Lord is risen. Hallelujah. The Lord's mighty arm has triumphed. God's grace has brought us victory. We will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for your redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one in God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Share with one another a sign of the peace of Christ.
Good morning. Happy Easter. The first reading today is from Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. More than 700 years before Christ, the prophet Isaiah proclaims the good news of God's salvation and calls all people to rejoice. God will make a feast for all people. God will wipe the tears from their eyes. And most importantly, God will destroy death itself. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines drained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Christ. This psalm today is from Psalms 118, 1 through 2, and 14 through 24. We'll read it whole verses responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation Echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that built, the builders rejected, has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be found in it. This is the gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the Sabbath day was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young person dressed in a white robe, an angel, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Hey, everybody. Guess what? It's Easter. It's kind of a big deal for us. I just want to say it is so good to be with you, so good to see you, whether you're 
visiting family, whether you're here every week, whether you're visiting for the first time, welcome. It's so good to be together on this Easter morning. Um, and I want to start with a question this morning. Um, if I say, like, in a movie or a book, um, it ends in a cliffhanger. Like, there's the drama, and then it stops, and you don't know what the ending is. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's not just something that happens in my mind. A cliffhanger? A little bit? Okay. Um, how many of you like when a story ends in a cliffhanger? Raise your hand. How many like? All right, Donald does. All right, anybody else? Anybody with Donald who's like, yeah, cliffhangers, all right. Okay, how many of you are like, oh, that's, that's too much, too much. I, I really want to know the end. Okay, most of you want to know the end. Wow, okay, all right. I, you know, Donald, I, mean, I kind of like a good cliffhanger sometimes, but then it's also, you know, kind of unsatisfying. Um, like, you want to know what the end of the story is. What's the rest of the story? How does it end? Um, like, you know, I grew up um, in the age of, of VHS tapes, and every time it rained or one of me and my brothers were sick, we would watch the Star Wars movies, the original three from the 70s, 80s. Um, and episode number five, the second movie, ends on a cliffhanger, right? Uh, Han Solo is frozen in carbonite and taken off on a ship. And what happens next? We don't know. We got to wait. So, of course, we would always just pop in the next movie and go, go on, but, you know, it ends on this cliffhanger. It ends in kind of a frozen state of suspense. We don't know what the rest of the story is. Anyone else got any other, like, franchises, movies, books um, that they can think of that they're like, yeah, actually, that ends on a cliffhanger. Any, any ideas? Like, sometimes I feel like reality shows will do this. Um, every, every home, t home renovation show, when they're going to buy a different house, they're, they're about to say, well, we decided to go with, and then it cuts to commercial, right? And you got to wait. you got to wait to see what the ending is. Any other, like, ideas? Uh, yeah, Mason. Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson that ends in a cliffhanger? The episodes. the episodes do. Ooh, cool. Nice. Any other ideas? I like that one. I like that one. Any other cliffhangers out there? Yeah. Who shot Jr. in Dallas? I'm glad that some of you know what that means, because I do not. I'm sorry, Paul. <laughs> I'll have to look that one up. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, did any of you notice, <laughs> did any of you notice that, um, I didn't actually notice the first time, did any of you notice that in the Easter story that we read this morning from the Gospel of Mark, and remember there's multiple Gospels, multiple tellings, retellings of the Easter story, in the one in Mark, we actually end on a cliffhanger. Let me tell you what I mean. Uh, and if you ever finish the Gospel of Mark, maybe, maybe you know what I'm talking about. Let me read just the last few verses for him. Right as the three women enter the tomb, um, they see then an angel, a, a young person, uh, sitting on the right side of the tomb. And it says they were alarmed. But in verse 6, the angel said to them, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He, he has been raised. He's not here. Look, there, here is the place where they laid him. He's not here. So go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So this is the very last verse. Listen for how this ends. So the women went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Huh? Really, this is how the great gospel of Mark is going to end? It's going to end in silence and fear? Like, come on, what comes next? 
What's the end of the story? What's the rest of the story? Our hearts almost beg to know, yearn to know. What else happens? Do the women go to Galilee? Do they tell the disciples? Do they tell anyone? What happens? Do we see the risen Jesus? Do they, does Jesus meet Mary? Do, what happens? This is all the stranger because by the time Mark had been written, about 70, there were already books that told about resurrection appearances of Jesus. And lest you think it's just me and you who think this is weird in the 21st century, actually, all the way back then, the second generation of Christians was already like, this is, this is too much. They were all, like most of us, were like, this cliffhanger just won't do. So if you look at the Gospel of Mark, actually, there's two other endings that these early Christians decided, we got to tell more of the story. We know more of what happened. So why, in the original telling of Mark, is there only this cliffhanger? What's the rest of the story? And how on earth can we possibly end a story especially like this? Especially ending in silence and fear. You know, if you ask me, silence and fear feel almost too prevalent in our lives, in our world. Silence and fear impact every one of us at some point. Silence perhaps impacts us when we're looking for the voice of God, when we're looking for a piece of the love of our community, and yet we might find silence instead. Fear impacts us when we are impacted by a diagnosis or with the diagnosis of a loved one. The fear of failure can be crippling. The fear of loss and grief. The fear even of death itself. Fear and silence are all too prevalent in our world just as death and loss and grief feel all too prevalent in our world. So what do we do with this? What do we do with this ending that seems to end us right back where we started in just a place of fear, silence, loss, and grief? What's up with this ending and what's the rest of the story? Well, I think that the reason we don't hear more is that the rest of the story doesn't ever actually end. I think the reason we end on a cliffhanger is because the rest of the story is actually you and me. The rest of the story are your stories. Your stories of failure and success. Your stories of death and life. Your stories of rebirth and reimagination, your stories of loss, but also of finding new life. It's almost like we can read this last word and they were afraid. And we can put our stories right on to the end of it. Our stories, we each have a story to tell. And when we read our stories, when we see our stories in the light of the cross, but also of the empty tomb, we see that Jesus is with us. So in fact, we see that fear and silence and death and loss and grief and everything that afflicts us is actually not the end of the story. We can't get to Easter without Good Friday, but Good Friday is not the end of the story. We can't get to resurrection without death, but death is not the end of the story. For we see on Easter Sunday, 
It's kind of a big deal. We see that neither death nor life nor heights nor powers nor silence nor fear nor grief nor loss nor anything, anything in all of creation that we ever might experience in life or in death can ever separate us from the hope that we find in Jesus Christ on this Easter morning. The story of Easter doesn't end with the end of the book. The story of Easter continues. The story of Easter is ongoing. The story of Easter never ends because it continues in you, in me, in every one of us, and in every person who follows the call to follow Jesus. Thanks be to God. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please rise and sing with me. be seated. I'd like to invite our youngest disciples to join me at the front. Should we sit here? Okay. Happy Easter, friends. How are you doing? Good. 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 Um, so today we talked about the Easter story. You know it well. You've heard it before. Um, I wanted to talk about what we've been talking about this morning, and that's that the Easter story is part of our lives. Um, it's kind of, you might say, intertwined, like it's twisted up. Our, that story, our story, they kind of go together, 
kind of like um, a Twizzler. Um, Twizzlers are, sometimes they're like multiple strands twisted together. Sometimes they're just one long strand that's kind of twisted. Um, and just to make that point, I would like to give you a Twizzler. Would you like a Twizzler? No. Okay. I figured that wouldn't be uh, too big of an ask. You never say no to a Twizzler. What, uh, what color would you like? Tough decisions. <laughs> They're a little sticky, yes. So um, now the next time you see a Twizzler, you'll remember that Jesus' love for you and for all of us are intertwined forever. Would anyone else like a Twizzler? OK, Donald wants one, all right. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's have a prayer before I get to a Twizzler. Let's have a prayer. You can repeat after me. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you for today. thank you for today. And thank you for your love for us. Help us to love each other and to love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What color, Donald? Purple? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Life-giving God, we pray today for this community of people. We pray for people wherever they come from. We pray for Carlton and Renshaw, for Cloquet and Esco. We pray for this place and all who abide here. Guide us, O oh God, in your way and help us to love and serve one another. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for this community of faith, the body of Christ, your church. Guide and keep your people in this place and across the world that we might serve you and our neighbors in need. Help us, O oh God, to be your Easter people across the world and across every day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray now for all peoples and all nations. Free all those who are oppressed or hurting because of their neighbors or governments. We pray especially for those under fire, for those in places of danger, and for those fleeing from danger or poverty. We pray today especially for those in Ukraine, those in Palestine, those in Sudan and Yemen, and everywhere that is impacted by war and hurt. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of new life, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Now we pray especially for the sick, the grieving, the lonely, and the hurting, including those we name aloud before you now.
life-giving God, we lift these prayers and pleas up to you, knowing that you know and hold each one in love and in care, whether we whisper or speak, or whether our prayers are known only to you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in life and in death. Renew our trust in your promises and comfort us in our grief, that we may live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding and eternal and unending love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we offer our hearts and our tithes to God. Please rise. Let us pray. Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, most merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
On the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup. He gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Take this and drink it. This is the cup of the new covenant, which is for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, for all are welcome, and all is now ready. Please be seated. To eat and drink together, I'll invite you to come forward, receive a piece of bread in the center, and then a cup on either side. Uh, the bread is gluten-free, the cups, the purple is wine, the white is grape juice, then you can return um, the cups to the holder on each side. Thank you, guys. Know also that all are welcome in this place, for we know that this table does not belong to us. It's not a Lutheran table. This is the Lord's table. So know that you are welcome here no matter what. Come, for all are welcome. I fall on my knees with 
Please rise in body, you are in spirit. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. People of God, receive now this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace this day and every day. Amen. Hallelujah. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.